Real Fit Radio with B and J dot L O U. And if this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. If you realize that you're the problem, then you can change yourself, learn something and grow wiser. When it comes to money, most people want to play it safe and feel secure. So passion does not direct them. Fear does. Those quotes I got from the Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That was an interesting quote, but I think it is something that you definitely can relate to right now because money is tight for a lot of people and jobs. And <sighs> I'll be happy when a day comes when it's like I don't mention anything else about coronavirus. <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it definitely has made people change in different ways in terms of trying to figure out ways to create an income avenue for themselves. If everybody is out there, including these big businesses, are thinking on how can we keep the ball rolling because of the uncertainty that's going on with the coronavirus, they don't know if things will go back to the way it was before. So it's almost like I'm sure they have somebody that's in their think tank trying to figure out how to continue their income upward so with that being said people should be doing that themselves instead of trying to figure out what jobs are going to open because the fear of not having an income coming in use your mind in that time if you're applying for a job and it's not there or you feel like dang the jobs that i've been having all my life is not available due to this stupid covid virus or whatever your feelings are sit down and give yourself some time to really think about a way or an opportunity that would help you assist somebody else and trust me that's what entrepreneurship is all about that's what business is all about find a problem and create a solution for it and you will never run out of money but if you're always focused on money then you will never be able to figure out what problems are and where the opportunities are and that's some of the tidbits i got from the book thus far well, it definitely revived the grind. If you didn't know, now you know. I think you hear people, and we've talked about it before, with like hustling and, you know, I'm out here grinding. But I do believe the goal is not to do that forever. But you definitely have to start somewhere. And it is a grind in the beginning, whatever it is. Whether you burn in the midnight oil, grinding from day to day, meaning you leave one job and go to the next job. And then you get home and put on your entrepreneurial hat and you handle your business there. That's a grind. The grind is real. And like I said, if you didn't know about it before, you definitely should know about it now. There should be things that people are thinking about or or forecasting based on the economy right now, the state of the world. And for a great majority, you can't open a newspaper, Google, that's another form of the news or turn on the news and not hear about stimulus package. Coronavirus cases are increasing. They're keeping us updated morning, noon and night. So in that you still have to pay your bills, put food on the table, need to to have an understanding of what you're willing to do to come out on top of this thing. And if you haven't even begun to gather your thoughts and put a plan together, it doesn't mean it's going to go as planned, but you definitely want to have a blueprint as a reference point and some things in place. So you're consistently doing some things every day. I find a lot of things, great ideas, things that probably would have done really well fall by the wayside or just die because lack of commitment and consistency. I say to the kids all the time, too, you give that type of effort to stuff that requires little to no effort. It doesn't even assist you with being better or put you in a position to where you're working smarter and not harder. You meet people and are committed to talking on the phone to them every day, all day, meeting up, finding ways to meet up, playing video games, staying on the Internet, checking other people's Instagram. You're committed to it and you do it consistently. You could give me an update on several of IG influencers, several YouTubers. You've learned so much about this new person that came into your life or you beat this video game. You got it on Wednesday and you beat it by Friday because you committed to beating it and you consistently put the man hours in. But people will give less to something that's going to put them in a situation to not only be able to assist 
assist your family, loved ones, and you be in a better position, but also to be of assistance to others that come in contact with you and also be a testament or a testimony that if you do put some action behind the idea, if you commit and you grind, you can come out on the side where you're winning or whatever your definition of success is. It's like, man, I'm not worried about punching the clock or will I have enough energy if I don't go to bed tonight at this time to get up and be at the job at my start time. So I think about all those things. And that was just one of the things we're talking about. What does the grind look like to you? Or is that something that's foreign to you? And now you're trying to figure out, I have all this free time because I've been sat down at home. I'm getting unemployment and I just don't know what to do. You might want to start thinking about what kind of time you're willing to invest to assist you to be in a better position, you know? I agree with that wholeheartedly. There's no need to sit back and focus on what you don't have, what the disadvantages are, all the negative stuff at this point, because you understand that's not going anywhere. Just like your bills ain't going nowhere, it's pretty much there until you pass away. So you just have to figure out the alternative in the midst of you sitting at home. Yeah. I wonder, do grind and hustling pretty much are the same or not? I know some people will say, no, the hustle is different, but I don't think so. I think it's based on the individual because it may be a hustle for you. Sometimes people say hustle. It's like, yeah, this is a get quick rich scheme or I know that this is only going to sustain me for a little bit of time. So it's a hustle. And then I'm on to the next one and the next one. That's for me personally. A grind is I'm putting in this time and effort into this particular thing or these particular things that are going to catapult or assist me in a way to move to the next level. Like what we did with the shirts. It went from painting to drawing to silk screening to getting a silk screen made to getting a printer to printing at home to online orders. You see the transitions and that still was a grind. The grind started as them being painted and stuff like that. We have an inspirational clothing brand. They're shirts and sweatshirts right now, but uh, it's Journey of a Legend. And the whole goal of Journey of a Legend is to inspire those in a way where every day they get up and move forward in purpose or passion, they succeed. And so it was real important to get that message worldwide. And the way that we collaborated as a team and figured out is t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and we can get that everywhere. And that message is pushed through the brand so when you see it you know exactly what that brand means but you embody the purpose of the brand because every day you try you succeed and that to me is a grind because at some point it'll be self-sustaining it's like it's ordered it's shipped out of a warehouse we're not having to do that way the grind is not happening like that it's just you're overseeing it so the grind versus the hustle and those two for me look very different if I was hustling shirts, I might not be doing that anymore. I might have hats now. I might not be doing any of that anymore. I might have a car wash business. I might not be doing that now. Now I'm selling stereos. I'm not doing that now. Now I'm managing artists. I'm not doing that now. It's not anything that I'm committed to and consistent with it. I'm jumping from pillar to post, you know? Yeah, so the hustle is just something that we would say is just a new way of making money for yourself. That's what a hustle is. Like you said, the grind is the amount of time you put into what that hustle is or what that business is so you can grind in everything and also i think it depends on how the person uses the word hustle because hustle may mean grind to somebody else but the way we're explaining it is grind is the time you're putting into whatever it is that you're doing at that moment yeah you can grind in working out you can grind in your eating yeah and it's a matter of perspective but i say with those c's (laughs) <laughs> be committed and be consistent in it and have a desired result or outcome or you could see some transitions or like I met this goal this was the end goal for me and that's why I put those man hours in but the grind is real right now the other thing I was thinking about too was a staycation I, th- I just said that to you like I think it's so important right now as we've touched on previous podcasts health and fitness then I think the one before that we touched on mental health being really important I think because of the way these different mandates keep happening where it's like first we were dining outside now we can't dine outside anymore and we were allowed to be out and now it's curfew again from 10 to 6 so all these different things keep going to play now there's a new strand in the UK of COVID and it may have made its way here it's just all these crazy updates that can have you in a panic and you feel like you're just kind of boxed in it's staycation time 
if you're coming in to LA and you have to quarantine for 14 days, you sign something saying you will quarantine for 14 days. And if you were booked at any hotel, if you're not booked for 14 days or more, your reservation supposedly will not be honored. I don't know how they're overseeing that, but yeah, just with all that stuff going on, because for me, staycation was like, I'm going to get a room and just go stay gone for four or five days just to get out, to give yourself the illusion that you're changing a location because the walking at the park that kind of gets old it's almost like this is not normally what I do I normally want to go here to the movies or if you want to see people but make sure you're creating some sort of staycation for your peace of mind and sanity where you are if you can where this like you taking mental days off you know what I'm not doing anything for the next couple of days I'm not talking about business taking any phone calls you can let everybody know I will be out of town almost like those automated emails that you're out of the office until Monday do it and be intentional this is for you to refuel and gather your thoughts and just try to come back and be at a hundred or on full I can't touch on this enough or you'll probably hear it again because when you're not right and you're not a hundred percent you can't do anything you can't grind you know you can't do anything for yourself let alone for others so staycations should be mandatory you should be taking a staycation once a month those things open back up I think those are things that you should be looking for booking.com has some rooms that are not really expensive you can find something in your area if you feel like driving out I always like to do the drive it's very therapeutic you know an hour out just to kind of feel like I'm getting away but I know it won't take very long for me to get back home because you throw a couple of more hours on there I don't want to do a drive to Vegas or something like that it just doesn't work for me but find out what that looks like for you it's all about you and let people know and if it's something you know you have little ones if somebody can keep them or if you can set up some zip locks for them <laughs> some little snacks and you just got to put this in the microwave do it make it fun oh you're you're an adult <laughs> these next three days I mean you're still seeing it it's not ideally what you want because you want to really separate yourself fully but you got to figure out what works for you but we keeping it real simple for those couple of days it's not gonna hurt anybody if we have to throw some spaghetti in the microwave or heat up some leftovers and do some little snacks here and there and you got your dvds or you know you got your set activities I'm gonna give you guys some responsibility you look you guys are adults you know or whatever be a little creative with it but it also was going to give you the time and space to refuel hopefully three days it's like i would need more but if you start implementing it more oh it doesn't build up so much i'm sure you know about that yeah i know about them I, honestly for me I, i'm not a person who likes to stay inside all the time i think i've been more of a homebody as of late and partly it's my fault i could add some more creativity to what i could be doing for myself but i think i have this blockade where it's like oh well yeah i want to do this but then honestly i make myself lazy to the point where it's, i don't feel like trying to plan that that takes effort like even in that it takes effort for me to figure out what i want to do sometime and it sounds stupid but that's that's something that I've been doing a long time. So I won't necessarily say that this is something that I enjoy doing, like in terms of trying to go from one spot to another. I would rather be outside doing some stuff. Or if I do go to eat, which we can't do that. Those are therapeutic moments for me. When we go to a restaurant, we're able to sit outside and we're trying new food. We can't do the room escapes and stuff because oh, that's yeah. shut down. So those are not staycations to me but those are things that b and i have done or the family as a whole and they're cool because you're out for a few hours and you're back at your home or if we did go somewhere at some point you want to see the sun i feel like a vampire going from one place to another and all i'm seeing is the walls at the end of the day whether i'm being lazy or not and creating my own activities even if you were like well tell me something you want to do and i'll look for some stuff you can't even do that right now so <laughs> it does require a little bit more brain power in terms of being creative on the inside trying to figure out those different things that uh, still stimulate your mind the same way as if you were getting those type of outings out for yourself and everybody is different 
So for me, my escape a lot of times is jumping on like some adventure video game. And most of these games are like not necessarily puzzles, but you have to utilize your mind to figure out how to beat these opponents and stuff like that because they are adventure games and you're learning these skill sets for these characters or whatever. But that kind of takes me away. But even that, you know, you get to a point where it's like, okay, I got to step back from that too because now I'm going from the phone of looking down a rabbit hole and then I'm going to another electric. So and I know you're big on not being on too many electronics because it's just brain overload. So I do agree with trying to figure out what's the best remedy for you in this time. And I'm going back to what you said earlier to a degree. I'm just so tired of hearing about this <laughs> damn virus, man. And I'm not saying that to be insensitive about what's going on. It's just that at some point, all of us in the world are like, dude, when can we just get back to fucking normal? And that don't necessarily mean normal as how we were doing before. Normalcy means we still can interact and move around and just be safe because at the end of the day before corona if i coughed and i had a cold you'll get sick i don't claim to know the full ramifications of getting it or i don't know how fatal it is but i think we have enough technology in the world and enough honestly common sense to make sure that we don't have an issue with this going forward now i get it for this time period or whatnot okay we just got to do what we got to do but i don't want to be going into march or april or something like that and we're still talking about trying to figure out staycations and (laughs) trying to escape your home or anything like that we got to be doing something else and i'm sure we will even if we are in this state we'll be having something else that's going on that will be penetrating you guys minds but um right now i'm okay with talking about it because it's just one of those things you just have to endure and our goal on this podcast is to be able to have these discussions and be transparent about them and then try to have a solution to it i know you're big on that don't bring a problem to somebody or say something doesn't work and then you don't have a solution so that's one of the things we try to do and that's why i think b said the staycations because she senses that it could be a problem in the world where people are just getting frustrated and they're living in their own mind they working from home they have to deal with their husband and their kids from home if that's something (laughs) and then when it's time to enjoy yourself guess what you're at home (laughs) and you want to order some food or get some food from your favorite restaurant well guess what you can't go to it you have to order there and they have to bring it to you guess where you're eating at it home so it's something that needs to be done there where like you said you can decompress yourself the best way you know how the silver lining in this whole covid time (laughs) or season whatever we want to call it is these topics are things you can highlight and bring to the forefront because they're not really relevant for some people and if it was just the norm because a staycation i think should be happening pre-covid i think the grind should be happening pre-covid because you're gonna either work hard now and play hard later or vice versa so i'm always looking to have an optimistic outlook on things so these are things that even after this keep implementing them that's why i said if this is new to you or you never heard it you didn't know about the grind now you know allow me to introduce myself because this is stuff that should be happening under normal circumstance just to keep you in a good headspace i don't know if you said it but i kept thinking oh it's therapeutic when you play the game when you go out and you try a new dish or a new drink and if you're eating by the water or you find this a little cozy cafe somewhere when we do these room escapes when working another part of our brain that is a staycation too we were doing those things and those were outlets or just meeting a new set of like-minded people right i can't even begin to do the zoom call to me <laughs> I mean, I'm staring. I just saw last night. I guess Facebook has their own version because it's saying portals. I think all of them now are trying to, if not trying to already are implementing their way of having like a virtual interface like instagram has it now no thank you i think twitter might end up doing it at some point and i get it everything is being visual not to be the boo i'm coming in raining on anybody's parade like they're having parties on 
Oh, yeah. The interfaces. Yeah, yeah, like, there was a commercial yeah. I saw last night where they all kind of boom, boom, boom came on. It's like, all right, we're here. Hey. They turn the music on. Oh, they dance. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody stopped the music. I'm, oh, I'm tired. I'm Started back up. Oh, and they're like drinking and yeah, looking I can't at the get screens. With that, man. Like, it's, it's just. It's like the Brady Bunch <laughs> with the squares, man. I can't I, get with I, that. I, I, I don't think it'll ever be normal to me. I haven't done a Zoom call. I wasn't even embracing FaceTime. And that's not with the advancement of technology. There are people facing. FaceTiming each other that are going to see each other in a couple of hours. I felt like that's great that FaceTime is an advancement of technology, but I would do that with someone that I couldn't see. I'm not FaceTiming. I'll be home later. I'll see you in a little bit. I have to look at you. You got to look at me. Now I'm looking at you. Remember Chris Rock was talking about that when he said, I haven't seen you all day. You in my pocket when he said, like, I liked your picture. You're like, they're not giving the space for you to miss each other, for you yeah, to have some alone you time. Said. You know, like, man, well, you always want to be with your friends. I'm with you all day. We're on social media, commenting up under each other's photos, FaceTiming. We don't do regular calls. And I don't have to talk to you. And this is just me because everybody has different needs or requirements or things that are fulfilling within their interaction, whether it be family relationship, relationship where it's a spouse, you know, boyfriend, friendships. It's overkill. I don't need to do all that. And I know that this is also allowing people that normally may have gotten together, like with Christmas coming up this Friday and people may have been flying out to love one. So I get that part. So they're making the best of it. And, and that might be a very feel good thing, but I don't even want to say this is the new, <laughs> the new way, you know, going forward of people interacting with each other. Cause there are other places that are open fully. And that's a whole nother topic. I don't even want to get into that. They don't have any mask or anything. They're walking around and enjoying in life and stuff so that in itself is just interesting that we're always so ahead but we're behind i feel like originally when facetime was created that's what they did it for which was for the people who had a relative family member or a friend that was in a different state or if they were in a different part of the world but then it just got to the point where a normal phone call is now a facetime call every time we talk and i just can't do that <laughs> the fact that i have to have my hand up in an angle for you to see me and then the one that kills me is the one that have FaceTime going while they're driving. It's just like, why am I FaceTiming while I'm driving? I thought the whole point of FaceTime is for me to look at you. If I'm driving and on FaceTime, I can't look at you. I'm looking at the road. We always find a way to take something that is used for one reason and then just use it for everything. It's like, why are we doing that? But if you do that type of stuff, man, more power to you. I ain't knocking you for it. This is just my opinion. But yeah, I can't get with the get down of the Hollywood squares. <laughs> type situation going on where we're gonna throw a party and we all tune in to the same radio and you got your glass over there in your spot and I'm in mine and we having a conversation over a computer. I mean, I get it for now. You have to do what you have to do, but if that's the new norm, it won't never be the new norm for me. I'll just be a loner then because they'll be mad at me. You invite me to a Zoom party and we can actually link up. I'm not even gonna answer. Oh, you have the option? No, I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not even answering you. Yeah. It's like I have an option to, you know, meet you at an establishment. I can put my money with your money or I put my money up. You put your money up. We rent out an establishment and we have a normal gathering party or lounging uh, situation going on. Cool. I'm with that. But if you come at me with some shit with Zoom and we can do that too, nah. I think it just shows how lazy some people could be or the lack of effort. It's like, okay, just because we can do this over here doesn't mean this is something we should do on a frequent basis. So I know you use the example of it ain't even got to be boyfriend, girlfriend situation. It can be anybody. It's no excitement there if I'm always seeing you in some form or fashion, whether it's social media or a FaceTime call. It's like when I do see you, it's like, <laughs> I was good. It feel like I've been around you forever. So, well, I definitely can see where you're going with people adapt the craziest stuff. Sometimes it's like we only did this because of that. Yeah, let's let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Forever. And it's like, 
no, but it's an option now. <laughs> so it's like, no, it's only an option because you want to do the bare minimum. No. Because when you were talking, I was thinking, who would do that? Like, why would you? But you're right. <laughs> I, I can see it where why it's waste like, the money? Why waste the money getting the establishment? Let's just zoom. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. I hope this never happens. Now you hear something and you're like, I hope I never, ever see anything like this after all this blows over. I hope that this is like a thing of the past. Like, oh, Zoom was in and then it just died. Like, it went away. It's like, oh, I remember Zoom happened during when Corona hit. But after no. that think about when you was telling me about the virtual concerts and shit like i think that's a dope idea going forward but when you you sent me a picture of dmx when he was performing in front of all those people in europe i remember that concert you can't emulate that virtual wise like the energy that was in that particular city when he was performing in front of thousands and thousands of people the artist can't even get that same type of energy it's totally different when you're performing in front of those people and you're hearing them quote your your lyrics back to you it's just the atmosphere their synergy mixed with yours is just like it's something that you couldn't get over a virtual concert i know those artists they're doing it because it's a form of income and some of them flat out enjoy doing it but i know in their mind damn i kind of miss that whole interaction from artist to crowd and because it is they're not doing it i know at some point they'll probably get back into it but even with that what's the stipulations now so <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness I can't even yeah football yeah. players with no crowd yeah. <laughs> we talked about that yeah, last week I, so you know for a thinker such as myself I start running with it like what if so I'm just gonna take that and put it <laughs> <laughs> just throw it out before it starts to take on a life of its own. Oh, you it's just, just hit crazy. me with the Will Smith on Bad Boys too. He's like, yeah, we're going to take this along with my mother's titties and we're going to put it in this box and we're going to throw that deep in the, mo- <laughs> the oh, ocean. Oh, hard enough. That. <laughs> you crazy. Got, he said, you got to be jock something cool stove to open that box oh wow. <laughs> yeah so yeah, no, i I'm guess you're throwing that in the box yeah and you don't put i don't that even want to i'm not gonna even yeah i'm not doing that i'm not thinking about that because that is just wow that's yeah, zoom all should right die. sorry Listen, ladies and gents i kind of went morpheus mode on y'all no uh-uh. <laughs> i'm just like wow i would hope that this would die these are one of those things that should never continue to trend because it's hot during covid it needs to go with the mask take that mask and that zoom and be done with it i am real i'm a real boy and (laughs) we can get together and uh work hang out whatever in whatever capacity but we can really do this a different way zoom is not it's not what's happening it's for now great thing for some people but yeah it's not hot let's let's get rid of that i'm with you i second that and another thing was success I'm sure people think about that all the time, but the definition or your definition of success during this time you need to make sure you pat yourself on the back. What success was looking like for you in retirement, your savings, all that, I'm sure it's changed <laughs> because you might have had to access some things early. You may not be where you were or where you thought you were going to be the next couple of years. The car that you had made the payments on on time, this happened. And, you know, it's just been an interruption of everything. So the definition that you have for success for your life may have changed drastically so in that i say celebrate the successes that are happening on the daily don't look so far ahead that you can't appreciate the success of right now you could just put yourself in such a cold stupor and be depressed and overwhelmed because of what's going on right now and your blueprint of how you were going to get to your you know i succeeded it's just taken away you know because of all of this it's just like how do i recover how do i get out of this funk or whatever but you're gonna have to change your perspective and redefine some things and your definition of success is one of them but i say focus more on the short term than rather the long term right now and this is what i have to deal with on a daily for myself i cannot control certain things And there are things that I can control, which is my effort and my perspective. And if I choose to continue to see things one way, then there's a feeling that comes with that. But if I say, you know what, 
I'm going to change my perspective and I'm going to give 110% to this because this is what success looks like for me today. This is the effort towards the big picture of what my new definition of success for my life is. So I'm going to put as much as I can into making this particular part of that task happen in the grand scheme of things. This is just a piece of it, like in football, the inches to get to the end zone. So I think that reevaluating or revisiting what success means to you and then changing your perspective and seeing what that looks like now going forward and really acknowledging your success day to day. Like I got this done. I got that done. And those things being crossed off the list can get me that much closer to the big goal. And every day is not going to look like the day before. I'm saying that to say 100% yesterday is not going to look like your 100% today. So be okay with that too, because sometimes certain things aren't available. You just aren't able to do what you plan to do. Curfew changes. The place is not open. Their hours change. An issue with the car. So you thought you were going to be able to drive, but now you're having this unforeseen mechanical issue. So you got to change perspective. What can I get done here now? You know, can I use my phone? Can I work on something else? Or maybe I'll take what I was going to work on tomorrow and do that today. And then I got to take care of this issue, find out what's going on with the car. But just make sure you are continuing to put yourself in a position of not feeling defeated, but just reaffirming that success can look different right now. But it's still your definition of success being that you revisit what that is and you redefine it it's okay I've been thinking about that because it's really frustrating when you have a plan and it keeps changing especially right now there's some things where it's like years down the line oh I never thought this was going to happen and I'm sure that's devastating for some people I've known people and I've heard in discussions where oh, I've been working with this company I got three years to retirement five years to retirement that's like short time for some people because they put in the man hours and when I retire you know I'm gonna have this this money for that and well what happens now when retirement was interrupted with COVID what happens now when your plan was to move you were saving money and the money you were saving you had to exhaust because you got laid off and unemployment was not enough so where you thought you were going to be moving to Houston or to Atlanta starting this new business you had your savings all that you've had to go into that you've depleted it so now what hmm. Well, the success in that is I had it to deplete and I paid the bills here. So now I got to change my perspective, redefine what success is going to look like for me and the plan of action. And now I got to execute it. It's just a daily thing. Grinding, the staycations, finding the success in the daily routine and the long term things. You know, some things may take a little bit longer to achieve, but celebrate those too. I did this in three months. It had to take me three months to do it. There was no way I could have done this in a few days and I finished it. But don't get too down in the dumps with things you cannot control. It is what it is and you're going to make the most of it and keep attacking it, putting in the effort. So um, those are the things that I've been thinking about throughout the week and thought I'd throw out there for for us to talk about i'm sure success is constantly changing for you in one of the irons you have in the fire hmm. not all of them but music because you kind of touched on the virtual <laughs> concert oh, man, so it's I'm like so, wait so a minute like, wait 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 a wait a minute so audience is out now virtual is the new thing well wait wait a wait a minute streaming you're constantly <laughs> re, yeah re, it's you know. changing so much it, yeah, how I did mean, that work from CDs to streaming? To you <laughs> saw when I came out when I came, when I met B. I sent. I remember when I met B. She was like, "Oh man, this body of work is off the chain." At the time, CDs were still in, like to a degree. They were. So the moment I decided to move to California, and I had just purchased all these CDs to get for the latest album I did, and now all of a sudden it was like all over the internet that CDs are obsolete. <laughs> like everybody is on streaming. Every Everybody's on Spotify. You looked in your backseat. Like, and I was just I like, I that? just spent like $200 on these album covers and the pressing of the CDs only for it to be null and void a couple months later. And then fast forward, we're talking about. Oh, I got one for you. What's that? <laughs> Well, because Lou does his homework and stays up with the ever changing trends in his industry. <laughs> Remember when it was like albums aren't art? Don't do albums. Oh anymore. hell yeah, no. So, <laughs> so now I just did this. What was it? Thirteen track 
This album. was years ago. This yeah. was years ago, not now. No, no, not <laughs> just. I'm sorry, wrong words. But I did this, you know, back in 2015. It was like one of my first bodies of work in Cali. And then like a year later, they started talking about <laughs> that people's patience for listening to more than seven songs on an album is like not in no more. Singles is what's in. And this, that, and other. And I just started to scratch my head because it's like, <laughs> can I just fucking create the way I want to create and you guys accept? what I'm bringing to the table and so obviously you know the moguls I have and my pipeline that I listen to like Jay-Z and Nas and Chappelle on some of the interviews that he's done a lot of those people they don't care what's going on in the world they gonna put out their project the way they feel they gonna put it out and that inspires me to no matter what's going on around me I'm still going to be authentic to myself in terms of what I want to give the world and also understand the business side to to where I can give what I want to give the way I want to give it but at the same time integrating some of the things that I'm learning with the new age system you can't be so rigid in your thinking to where it's like I'm gonna do this my way but you can't be too laxed either so it's a combination of both so that's what I've been learning like even with the YouTube stuff I'm not real big on creating YouTube content but I know with this ever-growing age people were very visual type people. So understanding the market and understanding where things are going and where they're continuing to head, you don't just be silly and be like, I'm not going to do that. It's ways you can do it to where you're still being yourself, but not to the point where you having to overextend yourself. YouTube is in, that's what I'm doing. Oh, Instagram posting all these pictures. That's what's in, that's what I'm doing. Nah, because you will run yourself ragged. This is completely unrelated to music, but I remember when I was in school and at the time I thought I was going to be a computer programmer and I talked to the professor about it and he was saying that there was this a plus certification that we we're supposed to take that's like a certificate for you to be able to program computers etc cetera, etc cetera. anyways and i ain't take the test by the way but he was like once you get this certification this is like your first step to being able to be a, a certified computer programmer but he's like every six months you're having to learn some new information because the way technology was growing at the time which is way faster now that's what it kind of feels like now where you're constantly having to learn or be ahead of the curve on how things are moving and that's how businesses stay in business because they're ahead of the curve and they're learning these things so I just brought that in as an example because they was like, oh, yeah, I'm thinking you were done once you learned this test and passed it. But in actuality, there was so much more that you were going to have to learn going forward because things were going to continue to change. No different than how small laptops are now compared to how big they were before. Telephones how people communicate. So the music scene continues to change in the way people consume it. So I have to understand that as a musician or as an artist, or just as a businessman going forward, because of those changes and uncertainties, it forced me to even look at more avenues while I'm doing my music. <laughs> It's a roller coaster over there. So you well, definitely got to have different irons in the fire the way stuff is going now. Cause well, I think too, you and I used to bump our heads a lot. We don't do it as much now, but one of the things that tickled me is because he was so committed to staying up on, which is a great thing, what was going on in his field of interest. Some of that stuff, when we would have conversations, I'd be like, so what if they said that that's not happening? That's them. That's not you. So what he said, you don't want to be so rigid in your thinking that you're not open to implementing some things because it's like, oh, there's a new way now you can stream music. Maybe I don't want to put money into having these pressed up or maybe I want to have a few or, you know, however I would say as far as your budget is for that thing. Because some people may have the financial means to have a few because some people like putting a CD in their hand. But the majority of their music, you, know, you find it online. It's only 100 of them pressed up. And Man, they, they sell even it got cars. The cars don't even have CD players no more. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. But those things to me, sometimes taking in so much of what to change it was this yesterday it's not that they just said they this person just said you'll be running around like a chicken with his head cut off where it's just like hey you know what i'm gonna take this in and see how it applies to like you said the authenticity of what i know that i have a passion for doing 
How does it interrupt it? How does it affect it? How does it assist it in still reaching the people in that capacity? Because streams, of course, it's reaching more people. So you got to still kind of play with it. And that goes back to what I was saying when I said that your definition of success, it shouldn't be ever changing. I think the constant in there still should be your foundation of the passion, the purpose. How far away is it taking you from it? Is it having you all over the place? You know, that's not in anymore. Well, this is not in anymore. Interlude aren't in anymore don't do an intro anymore you don't need cover art anymore you just get a little digital thing where they swipe it you don't want to allow all the, that stuff to come in and now the world is defining what success looks like for you the world is defining this is what you need to be doing it's a very fine line even in your industry because having have watched you evolve for you like i, I just got these see oh Oh, he still is, but he was on it like, okay, so I, I read this article. I'm listening to this. I listened to this particular podcast. These are vets in the game and this and that. And they've done it two, three times over. You know, this is how they were able to sustain. And this isn't it. And then there's somebody like myself that's like, well, that's not your journey. You know, <laughs> that's what, that's how it worked for them. Everybody's journey is different. I mean, it was some very interesting, heated conversations between the two of us, but all in love. And also just because he wants to do do his best and I want to see him at his best doing his best but staying authentic to what his purpose his passion and his journey we could take some from them but we gonna cut all that other stuff no that don't that don't work for us that don't, mm, 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 no so that can get crazy and that wasn't even COVID uh. <laughs> that was that was just that was just information that was like coming to you from everywhere because you opened yourself up to it you want to stay informed as we should but you got to pick and choose like oh no thank you would you like some of these appetizers no no thank you i've had enough would you like to try this i'm good i'm good but they say no no when to say when mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes that's interesting because you started laughing but i was thinking about it while you were talking like it's not funny but it was like so he said and it's just like you know it's a good balance for us because it's like i don't care what they said the cover art is what's popping. I like the cover art and this is your body of work for this time in your life and put it out. That sometimes we're very spiritual. God will have you doing something that everybody is doing opposite of and that's how you're standing out. You just got to trust the process. It's not always pretty, but I believe it's worth it when you leave in legacy when you know when you're leaving your imprint on the world in whatever capacity and for you specifically it's your music so not that you ever have but i feel bad for people that are trying to stay up with the times with the sound well you know this is in right now this is what they talking about and that instrument is it in i want to bring back the rawness of instruments and strings and it's like nah they not listening to that now because you know little so-and-so it's messed up because you're not even doing what you love now you're emulating what you feel is doing well or what people are telling you based on reports and analytics is trending or what's hot and, and i mean that's gotta be horrible because it's Where like it i don't became, even like it this just became a job yeah but this is not why i signed up for this i'm emulating that that's not even who i am the cold game that that plays on somebody mentally the psychology of it all i'm sure that just gets crazy and that's a whole nother topic altogether the sacrifices that we make in our authenticity to appease others that's crazy i'm over here feeling horrible depressed everything i come inside take off stuff i don't even want to wear this stuff i don't even like doing that but it appeases the masses but i'm just sick to my core because it's not really what i want to do but it works it pays the bills Ugh, man the sacrifice is so unfair it's not even an even exchange because you're sacrificing stuff that's priceless your happiness morals your characters you know and ultimately what your passion and purpose is so i could go down a whole road there because we have these talks as you guys know you you get to tune into this part but when these mics go off we're still at it talking about all kind of stuff this is a peer in <laughs> some of the conversations we have and that's why we created a uh, real fit it's a wrap i don't have anything else to add to any of those topics you get this podcast monday so i hope you had a merry christmas i hope that if you weren't able to see your loved ones you felt positive energy and love from someone or just woke up with a renewed vigor you know that there's positive energy in the world i think that's what people are walking around just happy i think you're still emitting energy and that can be passed off to other people so um i hope that you had a merry christmas with 
family, friends, loved ones, or just by yourself, just feeling blessed for good health, a roof over your head, whatever it is you're grateful for. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Just relax a little bit. And up next, 2021. Yeah, I think the next time we drop something, it will be 2021. <laughs> I'll leave y'all with this. I saw some on Instagram that said, Oh, y'all thought 2020 actor, wait till that motherfucker turns 21 and he can drink. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible. You want to laugh, but you want to be like, No, thank you. Let's just let it be what it is because I'm 21 can I'm, drink. Yeah, some beautiful things have come out of this COVID, and, and I'm sure everybody has got a story. Some things that they didn't even think they'd be doing came, you know, were birthed during this craziness. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to keep this conversation going, suggest the topics. You can hit us up at realfitradio at gmail.com. Our podcast drops every Monday. You can catch a snippet of the latest one on our Instagram at realfitradio. If you're not following us, you definitely should be. As always, we hope this inspired, impacted, or empowered someone. Until next time.